Michael Jackson will forever be remembered as the greatest entertainer of a generation. His groundbreaking dance moves, iconic vocal style, and countless hit singles have cemented him in the hearts and hips of legions of devoted fans around the world. At 6.30 p.m. on Thursday, June 25, 2009, those fans who had been overjoyed at the announcement of a comeback tour were left devastated. The King of Pop had been pronounced dead. Um, my brother, the legendary King of Pop, Michael Jackson, passed away on Thursday, June 25th. 2009 at 2.26 p.m. Found in his rented home in Bel Air at 12.30 p.m., news of Jackson's collapse had flown throughout the world, and when the terrible truth was finally revealed, loyal fans plummeted into despair. With candlelit vigils across the globe, they demonstrated their devotion in a touching salute to their hero. Many were struggling to come to terms with the realization that he was gone. My reaction was shock because he's a very young man, still at 50 years old, and he was a good person. He had his problems, but he was still a good person. It's kind of devastating. He's one of those people that you never would have thought of dying so soon because you think of all he did for like music and music videos and pop culture. The Jackson Estate in Encino, California became a shrine to Michael with flowers, balloons, and messages strewn along the walls and outside the gates as fans gathered to pay their last respects. Accompanied by longtime family friend, Reverend Al Sharpton, Michael's father, Joe, took in the tributes and shook hands with his son's grieving fans. And the family and I are very proud to see all of you come out here and, and, then, and help us with this whole situation because we know that we do have fans all over the world. We know that we are loved all over the world. But one thing that um, I wish could have happened, I wish that Michael could be here to see all this, have to wait till something happened like this before, before uh, it could be uh, realized. Meanwhile, over in Gary, Indiana, the house where Michael and his eight siblings grew up had also become a mecca for grieving fans and neighbors who still remembered baby-faced Michael from his days as the youngest member of the Jackson Five. It hurt to know that Michael passed on, but he'll always be remembered. And right here in Gary, Indiana, we would always love the Jackson Fives. Regardless of whatever they say about them or whatever happened in the past, we here in Gary love the Jacksons. Twenty-five miles southeast of downtown Chicago, the city of Gary was founded in 1906 by the United States Steel Corporation. It got its name from company chairman Albert H. Gary and was one of the first cities in the U.S. to elect an African-American mayor. It was here that former boxer Joseph Walter Jackson settled with his new wife Catherine in 1949. While Catherine got straight down to the business of raising children, Joe took a full-time job as a crane operator at the steel mill to support their growing family. Although clearly his passion lay in another direction. 
In the mid-1950s, he embarked on a musical career, playing guitar in a band called the Falcons with his brother Luther. When the Falcons failed to score a record contract, the reality of having seven young mouths to feed forced Joe to return to his old job at the steel mill. But before long, he'd begun pouring his creative aspirations into a family singing act made up of his three eldest sons. As the Jackson brothers, Jackie, Tito, and Jermaine were backed up on congas and tambourine by Marlon and six-year-old Michael, who soon began to eclipse his older brothers with his singing and dancing talents. Stopping at nothing to make the group a success, Joe put the boys through strenuous rehearsals. But there was no shortage of love and comfort to be found in the arms of their mother. Everyone loved Catherine. I think that she was very much revered. She was um, a very spiritual woman, a Jehovah Witness, and she was the gentle force in the Jackson family. In 1967, with nine-year-old Michael at the helm, the Jackson brothers became the Jackson Five. After winning a talent show at a local high school performing soul and R&B hits, Joe got busy booking his young prodigies into black clubs and venues around Gary and Chicago on the Chitlin circuit. All the while, little Michael continued honing his singing and dancing skills, learning from watching the likes of James Brown, Marvin Gaye, and Etta James. As their fame grew in and around Indiana, they began taking their act further afield. And by the middle of 1967, they'd made it to New York. With the help of R&B legend Sam and Dave, they scored a spot at the prestigious amateur night competition at the Apollo Theater in Harlem. Billed as the place where stars are born and legends are made, the famous theater, which had played host to legends like Ella Fitzgerald and Billie Holiday, certainly lived up to its promise for the Jackson Five. After winning the Amateur Night Showdown on August 13th, Gladys Knight brought them to the attention of Motown chief Barry Gordy. Although Barry was initially reluctant to take on another child act after signing Little Stevie Wonder, he eventually granted them an audition at Motown, and in late 1968, he was blown away by a 10-year-old Michael Jackson. He always wanted to be the best and was willing to work as hard as it took to be that. And we could all see, you know, that he was a winner at that age. And uh, I've always believed winners are winners long before they win. And uh, picking them out before they win was very easy with uh, Michael Jackson. The following year, he moved the Jackson Five to California to begin grooming them as Motown's next hit-making act. In a later interview, he described the group as the last big stars to come rolling off my assembly line. While the older brothers stayed with Barry, Marlon and Michael moved in with Motown queen Diana Ross. The move was all part of a cunning marketing plan to attach Motown's newest act to one of its biggest stars. The press kit later claimed that Diana had personally discovered the group and introduced them to Motown. The next step was to buy the group out of their contract with the Steeltown label, which had released three Jackson 5 singles the previous year. Written by Barry Gordy and the corporation, the Jackson 5's first single, I Want You Back, hit number one in 1970 and made 11-year-old Michael an instant sensation. They followed up with three more consecutive Billboard number ones. Within a year, Jackson Mania was sweeping the nation. In 1971, Motown decided to capitalize on the surging popularity of their youngest star by launching a spin-off solo career for Michael. As well as landing a top five hit with the single Got To Be There, he also sang the title track to the movie Ben. Taken from his second solo album of the same name, it was to be the first number one single of his solo career. They're back there uh, doing it together and uh, he just sort of grew up under the Motown banner and uh, while most people, people think that he had 